Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today is a nice, warm, humid, tropical day. A good day to work on my ficus tree. The tree's been growing really well since the last pruning, but today I'm going to do some root work and get the top back in shape. Tropical tree work and updates coming up in the bonsai zone. Before I get to the ficus, I'll do an update of some of the tropical trees. My Schifflera clump here is losing all its leaf stalks or petioles. They're all falling off. You can see them down all over the bench here. So that's a good sign. That means the new leaves will be coming in soon. There's a few sprouting in one area here. There's a few showing up over here too, but uh, yeah, they'll be coming in the next couple of weeks. That'll be exciting to see it grow in with those little small leaves. We'll head into the greenhouse now before it gets too hot and humid in there. It's kind of early in the morning still. And there's a couple of things I want to show you in here. Um, I have a few new additions. I have a Brazilian rain tree here that Connor gave me. That was, uh, he gave it to me for taking care of his plants all summer. So that was really nice of him. I really, uh, I've always wanted a Brazilian rain tree and now I have one. This is one of those plants that I got from Noah. So I planted that up. It kind of looks like a sea onion, but, uh, I don't know, I've never seen one with the speckled leaves like that. It has kind of an onion type bulb on the bottom. And they multiply like sea onions. And The leaves are coming in on my Portulacari Afro Forest. They're looking nice and miniature. So that's exciting. Um, I think today I'll be pruning up my ficus cutting of a cutting here. You can see the roots are growing like all over the bench here. They're, it's probably glued to the bench. I'll have to peel it off to work on the tree. Another thing I wanted to show you, um, this is my carp oak tree. Uh, this is one that I gave to Connor and he potted it up in this big pot down here. It's kind of a pot that's got air holes in it for air pruning the roots. And the tree has grown really, really well. Like, if we go up here, it's uh, taller than me now. And it's starting to get branching at the top. It's divided into one, two, three, four branches. And not only is it getting branching at the top, but the branches are subdividing out here. You can see that I'm getting branching on my branching, which is really exciting. And there's a spider in there. It looks like Lucas the spider. It's a jumping spider. Anyway, so it's growing really tall. My uh, carp oak trees in my rainforest, if we go down here, you can see the rainforest, maybe. <laughs> There's the pot, it's covered with the, the baby's tears and yeah, there's the rainforest. So those carp oak trees are also growing really, really well. There's my coffee plant in there. Um, getting lots of branching on them. There's some branches happening, one in here. And they're also as tall as me. So here's my tallest carp oak tree. It's just a little, shorter than Connor's one and I think that's because I did one more root pruning on it than Connor did I'm not sure but uh, yeah it's just about the same height it's very tall so those will need pruning before I bring them in for the winter because I don't know if I can fit a tree that tall in the plant room I'm tempted to leave the the one that Connor gave back to me just let it grow in the winter in the plant room and because I have the height in the plant room, it's just, I don't want it to take up too much space, but uh, yeah, it would be kind of interesting to let it grow and see just how big and thick the trunk can get. If we go down to the trunk, 
I've talked about creating a tall, straight, tapered trunk on trees. How you have to cut the trunk, do a chop, let it grow, then you cut it higher up and let it grow again, and eventually you get a nice, straight, tapered trunk on your tree. So here's, an, here's a cut that I made way back. I just cut the trunk off so it was a stump and then it regrew a new branch or a new leader and now you can see it's thickened up and you can barely tell that that was you know a branch coming off this trunk. I'll give you a shot of what they look like earlier on one of my other trees. If you can see this one, see how after the trunk chop the new leader kind of comes off to the side. So as that thickens up, it'll also, you know, turn smooth like this trunk and it'll all blend in. So yeah, the next step on this tree would be to do another trunk chop somewhere. Um, you can see at the base of each leaf, you can see the new bud that's forming there. So if I was to cut this trunk off here, these buds would be activated and they would grow new branches and a new leader for the tree there. So, yeah, so that's the update to the carp oaks. Uh, my ficus benjamina, my fusion one, where I'm fusing the new top on the old trunk, is doing really well. I've top pruned it once this year and it's grown in really nicely again. Um, it is actually ready to do another trunk chop. However, I'm not going to do it at this time. I want it to stay strong to get it over the winter. So in spring, I'll give it another, uh, you know, cutting up top to shorten it, try and get all my branch structure going the right direction. So I'm just gonna keep all the foliage on the tree for now and get it through the winter. So it'll be nice and strong for the winter. Everything else is doing really well in here. My plumeria is growing really well. You can see it back here. Um, I was hoping to get two branches off the trunk. There's a trunk chop down there. But I only got one branch and you can see the other branch is sort of forming there, but it never materialized. It will in future, but... Uh, so that'll be ready for another trunk chop. Probably when the leaves fall off, I'll, uh, I'll do it then. My cutting of the plumeria is over here. It's still alive and well, but it never did grow leaves on it. They keep forming. I can see one forming right now. Um, let me get in there. Right here, there's a new leaf forming. And they've been doing that all summer. They kind of form new leaves and then they don't materialize. They just kind of go black and fall off. So I don't know if that's just, you know, the root system needs to gain strength or, yeah. Noah also gave me a tamarind tree here, which is right in here, and a Persian silk tree, which is back there. So that's exciting. Some new additions to the uh, plant room for this winter. I have a African vine here and I'm not sure what kind it is um, this is the rotted base of it I've had it for many many years um, and it grows these vines I don't know if you can see the vine and it's a succulent type vine the vines swell up ah, it's way back behind my miserable looking ficus cuttings I don't know if you can see it growing down the greenhouse there, but the vines swell up like a succulent and then you can plant them. You can just break them off and plant them. Um, I think the vine's growing, yeah, it's growing underneath the bench down here. So I did plant, I planted a lot of them. We'll go outside now to the succulent bench, which is over here. So here's those vines. I, I planted all the pieces of the vine 
and they're sprouting out the top now. So I think that'll make an interesting, you know, succulent plant in the future. Yeah. My ficus religiosa, this is the second summer in a row that it hasn't grown. Um, last year I had it outside all summer and it just stayed dormant. It didn't grow, it didn't... Yeah, it just sat there dormant the entire summer. Which, you know, I would think that's the best time for it to grow, but it... It didn't, it just stayed dormant. And this year again, it just stayed dormant the entire summer. Last year when I brought it inside, into the plant room in fall, it just exploded in growth and grew all winter. So I don't know if I somehow have these seasons reversed on these trees uh, that, you know, mine are growing in winter and dormant in summer. But uh, I don't know, maybe they just gain energy in the summer and then uh, when they've built up all this sugar and sap in them, they explode in growth. But yeah, that's, it's been doing well. It just hasn't grown all summer. Very strange. It is, uh, it is getting, I was uh, working on this transition from my trunk into these strong upright branches or trunks. And that part of it's looking really good. They're blending in really nicely, thickening up really nicely. So I'm really happy with the upper structure of this tree. It will need to be, all these branches will have to be shortened in future. So probably before I bring it in for the winter, I'll do a, a severe cutback to all the branches and the upright trunks, you know, making the tree quite short and stubby, and then it'll grow again in the winter. My uh, monkey thorn acacia is doing really well. It's uh, starting to get that flat top on it. I keep pruning the top growth and it starts subdividing. The trunk's getting really thick and woody. Yeah, for a small tree it's doing doing really well. My ficus root over temple is doing quite well now. It had a rough time. Um, it got a lot of scale insects on it and because it's in such a big heavy pot I couldn't really move it around in the plant room. So I don't think it got enough light in the winter and the tree sort of got weak and I lost quite a few of the major branches on it. Uh, you can see around the side here, there's a major branch kind of died back. There was another one on top that died back. However, I brought it outside in spring and it, it's slowly recovering. It's uh, getting quite a nice canopy on it now. So it's back in good health. Um, the temple is totally covered in moss again, which seems to happen a lot. So yeah, I'll be doing some more work to that this year. Um, I'm just letting you know that it's alive and well. My ficus elasticas are doing really, really well also. They're sort of the king of aerial roots. If you come down here, these are the aerial roots from last year. And I just assumed they had dried up and died, but no, they, uh, they sprouted new roots from the sort of old dried up roots and they've grown right down and have touched the ground so I'm sure that's rooted into the ground down there. The trees uh, they're doing really well the trunk is slowly thickening on them so it's kind of exciting to get you know my ficus elasticas going again after my big old one died. I have a new ficus lyrata here um, my original one, I uh, did all the pre bonsai work on it, root pruned it, repotted it, stripped all the leaves off. The new leaves were growing in really nicely and then they just started falling off and the tree got weak and died. And I think it's because I had the soil too wet and the roots probably rotted or I don't know, just didn't form very well. Maybe it was just the wrong time of year to repot it or something. If it was a ficus microcarpa, it would have had no problem, but uh, maybe the ficus lyrata is a little different. So I bought another one. 
So this will be try two for the ficus lorata. I also have a new tree back here. It's a myrtle or a tea tree. I got this uh, yeah, towards the end of winter last year and I never got time to make a video on it. It was pruned like topiary. It was a sort of a ball shaped foliage on top. And I've been letting it grow ever since and it's been getting a really nice shape. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, yeah, a really nice top to it. So, my plans for this tree is also to grow this in an avatar style home tree. I think it's got, you know, the perfect leaf size. It's got a good shape already for that style. So that's my plan, is to grow this into a home tree style from the movie Avatar. Well, I think that's enough updates. I think I'd better get back to the bench and start working on the ficus tree. The last video on my ficus microcarpa, the one I call fancy, was about a month and a half ago where I exposed more of the roots and I did a top pruning. I'm going to start today by working on the root base. I want to get rid of some of these crossing roots and just generally get the root base looking better. I'll start on this side. There's a nice root that comes down from the trunk and flares into the ground here. And this root spoils it. Um, all the rest of the roots kind of flow nicely. There's one that's kind of crossing here, but that's not too noticeable. This one's bugging me, so I'm going to remove it. I, uh, I think it'll help the flow line from the trunks coming down to the ground. This kind of interrupts that nice flow. All right, so I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to try and get my pruners in here to get a nice flush cut. Maybe right about there. And here we go. That's got it. It's still attached somewhere here. It's cut away, but there's roots. Oh no, it's not. It's still part of it here. I've got to go a little deeper, I guess. There. And I'll have to cut it away at the base here too. I don't think I can pull it out of the soil. It's just too firmly rooted in there. All right, I'll see if I can get this removed. Um, I'll put it off at the base down here. And then I'll have to get my finer scissors and cut away all these aerial roots. All right. A lot of roots holding that in place. But it's coming. There we go. So that's, you know, one root that didn't look very good removed. I will clean up this cut a bit better now that I can see a little better. I'm looking at the front now and I really like the way it flows into the ground much better than having that root crossing here. So let's go on and clean up some more roots now. The next root that stands out as being uh, you know, not a very nice flow line is this one right here. There is a nice root that comes here and another one kind of below it that's better. So I'm going to remove that one. So here I go. I think that's got it. Get a little deeper here. There we go. And I'll cut that off at the ground down here too. And trim away all these aerial roots that are fused. Like that. I can also clean this up a little bit here. Oh, still don't like that. That's better. The next one I want to remove is this one that crosses across here. So I'll cut that one off. Like that. 
remove it from the ground down here. There's a root here. It comes down and divides into three here. And this is the worst of the divisions. It kind of comes back on the center of the tree. So I'm going to remove that and keep these two divisions here. So that one will come off. So I'll come in and remove that. And that one's gone. There is a root here that kind of sticks out into the air. It's an aerial root that grew and just really never got into the ground. Um, the location isn't bad. I just wish it was kind of pushed up against the trunk. So I will try and position it, get it wedged in here. So it grows kind of alongside the trunk like that. The root base on your ficus doesn't have to look perfect, but you do want the majority of your roots flowing in a nice radial pattern. And then you can have the odd one, the smaller roots kind of crisscrossing to make it look more natural. I'm happy with the root base now. Next, I'll tackle the upper canopy. One thing you'll notice with your ficus trees is that when you start to get a really full canopy up top, there's a lot of leaves that can generate a lot of energy and the tree starts to grow really quickly. Most of the time you're trying to grow your little ficus tree into a large tree, but sometimes when you get a huge canopy like this, you want to slow the growth down. It just starts getting too big. This tree is certainly not too big, but it's a lot bigger than when I first got it in a little tiny plastic nursery pot. My goal for this tree is to get a nice flowing line from the ground, flowing up the roots, up the trunks, and then out into the canopy to get a very flowing style tree. This tree has a lot of multi trunks in here. And my goal is in the future, as the tree thickens up and develops, all these trunks will fuse together at the base and create a really interesting trunk to the tree. I'll start the work on the canopy with a profile type pruning to the upper canopy. So I'll pick a height for the tree, be about here, and just start cutting. I'll come out front now and have a look. It's not looking too bad. Um, some of these front branches need a little cleanup work. They're kind of hanging a little low. I want the them to reach up and then a little higher up they'll start hanging down. So it's a little early for these to be kind of weeping at this point in time. I may be able to tuck them up into the canopy like that or even possibly tie them up so they you know they strengthen up in that upright position maybe I'll try that I have some string here I'll try wrapping it around the base of the branches to kind of keep them more upright as I said later on they'll grow upright and then they'll start to weep at the tips so it'll create a nice graceful kind of arching tree almost like a weeping willow um, I'll have to be careful when I wrap the string around the branches that it doesn't grow into the string and leave marks, so I'll, I'll keep my eye on it. So here goes. I'm thinking somewhere about here. So I'll tie the string. I think that'll do it. I'll finish pruning the canopy now. Getting a nice kind of rounded form to it all.
here's a shot of the tree now, all pruned up. I'm doing a profile type pruning on the canopy because the tree is still young. This tree will probably take another 10 years before I start getting a nice branch structure in the upper canopy. A branch structure where I'll actually be defoliating the tree and working on each individual branch to get them styled just right. But for now, just to keep it in check, I just do profile pruning to the tree. That's all for today. I'll get my ficus microcarpa fancy back on the bench and leave it outdoors until it's time to bring it inside for the winter. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for watching today in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>